www.radio.com. What is up, Man Hour Nation? After Hours show is here. Live, raw, and uncut sports talk tonight, 10 p.m. East Coast time. But before we get too live and before we get too raw and uncut, we have to welcome the man, the myth, the legend himself, Mr. John Hoffman. What's up, Hoffy? What's up, Buck? Oh, you know, man. You're looking shredded these days, my friend. I know. Like, those are some jack-off forearms, aren't they? <laughs> those are forearms that when you see it, when you see a guy just like that, you're like, man, this guy jacks off a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Live, raw, and uncut. But, guys, this is the After hour show, and we, me, myself, and Hoppy, open this up to you guys to whatever you want to talk about. If you want to talk about the New England Patriots, come on down. If you want to talk about the Houston Texans, come on down. If you want to talk about the greatest team to ever graze the face of this earth in the New York football Jets, come on down. All you got to do is click that link that I pinned to the YouTubes and Facebooks here. Click that link. It'll pop us up right there on the bottom. And Hoffy, you say, hey, bring this man on. Let's talk to him. But, Hoffy, today, 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 I released, that's right, Buck Nasty himself released week one NFL power rankings. And these power rankings have people up in arms. So before we get too carried away, before you start bashing me, Hoffy, about all these crappy ass rankings or whatever, let's show the people what the rankings are right here, right now. So, guys, these these are obviously my rankings here from uh, uh, going into the uh, – uh, get that out of there. How to get that out of there. Oops, wrong button. Uh, going into the week one of the 2023 NFL season. At number one, I do have the Philadelphia Eagles. I, I think they are the most complete, most well-rounded team. And then you had the Miami Dolphins coming at two. The 49ers coming in at three, even without Nick Bose, I still think they're solid number three team. And then number four, you have my Kansas City Chiefs. Dallas Cowboys coming in at five. The Bengals coming in at six. Seahawks coming in at number seven. At number eight, I do have the Minnesota Vikings. Number nine, the Pittsburgh Steelers. The Pittsburgh Steelers. And that coming in at number 10, the New York football Giants. So, Hoffy, when you see these power rankings, what are your first initial thoughts when you see these? Just like the rest of the audience, are you high on drugs tonight? Uh, no, I'm not. Like, <laughs> what What don't you like about them? Well, first off, you spelt New York Jets wrong there at number 10. Mm. And I might even move those. Uh, I think you meant to say New York Jets up a couple there. I I I don't know where you're coming from with uh, Dallas Cowboys at number five. I think it's just because you've got uh, some stuff from, you know, Dak Prescott on your chin. So I want to clean that one up, too. I definitely swallow everything that I put in my mouth. But with that being said, 
Kevin is says a bunch of haters here. Bunch of haters says Kevin. He says no Buffalo. Yes, I think the Buffalo Bills are going to be one of the most overrated teams of the 2023 NFL season. I don't see any way, shape, or form where they are a top two team in the AFC East. I have the Miami Dolphins and then probably the New England Patriots at the one-two thing, and then the Jets, and then the Buffalo Bills. So I, as much as you guys love Josh Allen, much as you love Stephon Diggs, much as you love Gabriel Davis, when you look at the rest of the Buffalo Bills team, I don't think anything scares me with the Buffalo Bills, Hoffy. Would you put the Buffalo Bills up there? I got them definitely in the top 10. Um, I think your your top five is minus the Dallas Cowboys. I think I would definitely have the Bengals in that top five. Uh, I think I would – I love the Dolphins and what they bring to the table, but can we promise that two is not going to turn into a vegetable by the fifth week of we the season? We cannot promise no seizures this season. <laughs> I mean, they did get a, a solid backup that can win you some games, but it, I mean, I think their season relies on the health of, of Tua. Uh, but I, I think if you have your top four are doable, you got to, I think you have Cincinnati in there. I think you can mix them into any of those, you know, three or four spots. I mean, I think I would have Kansas City and San Francisco in, in two and three spots, it, you know. In, in any order that you want. Um, but the Dallas Cowboys in the top five. So let me justify where I put the Kansas City Chiefs. Now, obviously, the Kansas City Chiefs are the reigning Super Bowl champions. Obviously, I am a Kansas City Chiefs fan. So you cannot say this is biased in any way, shape, or form. But last year, how the Kansas City Chiefs kind of excelled with the subtraction of Tyreek Hill not having that number one guy. The the news that has kind of come out out of Chiefs camp in the last 24 hours, right? Chris Jones is not there. Travis Kelsey hyperextended his knee at practice. He probably will not play week one. So you kind of have to take that everything in into consideration and – that is why I kind of dropped the Chiefs down because I did have them at number two, but I dropped them down to number four just because I do think the San Francisco 49ers are a little bit better, even without Nick Busa with a head-to-head matchup right now. I think the Miami Dolphins would beat the Chiefs. I think the 49ers would, would beat the Chiefs, and I think the Eagles would beat the Chiefs as well. Now, putting at the Cowboys excuse me, at number five, the Cowboys on paper have one of the most dominant teams out there. You look at the receiver core from top to bottom. Hoffy, any one of the receivers on their roster can be a number two, if not a number one, on any other team in the NFL. They have a damn good quarterback in Dak Prescott. That's right. I said damn good quarterback. Did you in not Dak see Prescott. the video of him throwing into double coverage today to a receiver that was five foot five? You what you do at practice is you test your limits. You see what you can and cannot do. He was simply testing the jumping ability of Deuce Vaughn. But the Dallas Cowboys have the best defense in the NFL. They have a top five offense in the NFL, and they have one of the best coaches in Mike McCarty in the NFL. The Dallas Cowboys are going to do some work in the regular season. Look out for them. There's the homer in, in you coming out on those Cowboys there, buddy. Kevin you're, tell, says, you're telling me that defense is better than the Eagles or uh, the 49ers? Heard, so this is what you guys do not realize. The Philadelphia Eagles defense is really, really good. They are probably the best defense in the NFL. I will give you that. The 49ers defense right now, without Nick Bosa on the field, they are not better than the Dallas Cowboys. But with Nick Bosa on the field, they're probably kind of – Neck and neck. I think the Dallas Cowboys are a solid two, if not three, defense in the NFL. Yes, I think they're that good a defense. I mean, I, I think the Eagles even got the steal of the draft and getting um, Dean, the linebacker out of Georgia, University of Georgia. I think he, I mean, uh, you he's mean only going to help Carter? that defense. What's that? Isn't it Jalen Carter? 
but they got, well, they got Carter, but they got Dean too. He he slipped oh, okay. down yeah, yeah, down there. Right. Yep, you're right. But yeah, I mean, adding both of those guys really, I mean, already a potent defense, and then you add those two on there, and you know, Dean's coming from the Georgia you know background, and there's some there's some you know Bulldogs already on that roster, so I think they're gonna uh, they're gonna mesh really well. Uh, so Kevin brought up this point. NFL.com has the Buffalo Bills at number five. See, Kevin, what you don't understand is that the literally the NFL.com, yes, they might be the NFL website and all the experts are at NFL.com. Last year, they had some of the worst power rankings all time over there. If you look at their preseason or, or the rankings from last season from week one, only two of those teams were in the top 10 at the end of the season, and that was the Kansas City Chiefs and the San Francisco 49ers. So that tells you how much stock you you, you can put at the NFL.com power rankings. The real power rankings are for me. No other person out there. So, Hoffie, you, you keep wanting to dog about the Dallas Cowboys, but you kind of overlook the simple fact that I put the Pittsburgh Steelers up there. People were pissed that it had the Steelers up there and not the Ravens. Do you think the Steelers <laughs> are a top 10 team or the Ravens are a top 10 team at that? No, <laughs> absolutely not for either one of those teams. I do think the, uh, the Steelers could make some noise. I do think they could slide into that, you know, eight, nine, 10 area in a couple weeks or so. I do think they might surprise some people, but to, to start this season with them in the top 10, no. I mean, I think you got to have the Jets over them. I think you got to have the Bills in there. Um, shit, I'd almost put the Patriots in front of them, and I don't think they belong in the top 10 either. Okay. Why would you put the New York football Jets in the top 10 power rankings when they're going to be a seven-win team this season? Because they're better than the Giants, the Steelers, and the Vikings, and the Seahawks. What? Have you not been paying attention to what I've been telling you the last two weeks about the New York football Giants? They are the most complete team in the NFL. They added every missing part of their offense and their defense that they needed last season through the draft and free agency. Look out for Danny Dimes. And I hope uh, so. I, I love me some Brian Dable, but you know, I, I'm a I'm a what have you done for me lately kind of guy, and I don't know that we can trust Danny Dimes yet. I I would like to. You know, North Carolina guy, why not? But I, I just don't know. Or Duke, uh, excuse me. So you want to take the Giants out and put the Jets in. Uh, and you want to take the Steelers out and put who, like, who in? Who would you replace for the Steelers? I, I think you got to have the Bills in there. Bills, okay. Yeah, that's right. Take the Bills. I mean, the, the Jets are definitely, I think, going to be in there. I think... I think the Jets are better than the Steelers. I think you put them head to head. I think they they would uh, not even hold the Jets jockstrap at this point in time. So, heck, why don't you put the fucking Buccaneers in there? Oh, now nah, you're just <laughs> now. I do love me some Baker Mayfield. Heck, I'd put the Saints in there over the Steelers. Oh, man, Hoffy, my man. Come on, we've been talking about Jimmy Graham all all, all off season. <laughs> what you makes know, they got a dog at quarterback? They got a top. I mean, shit, they got two top ten quarterbacks on their team. Just ask, you know, just ask Combs. Derek Carr is is pretty good. I'll I'll I will give you that. And you got Jameis Winston. There's two top ten quarterbacks. Like I said, just ask Combs. So what don't you like about the Pittsburgh Steelers? They're the Pittsburgh Steelers. <laughs> Besides that, g g give me some like insights of like why don't you like the Steelers? Like I said, it's it's what have you done for me? I mean, they they went they started what last season. Mike Tomlin has never had a losing season. Their defense is a top five defense in the NFL. TJ Watt is a dog. Nine Can and eight you... isn't top ten. What? Nine and eight isn't top ten. So. Last, right. last year, this is this year. This year, this is Kenny Pickett's team. He's had a full offseason. He's going to be started week one. George Pickens is a dog. Najee Harris is a dog. The whole defense is a dog. I, I agree with the offensive, you know, 
the weapons. They're dogs, and I, you know, Watts a, a stud. But again, he's much like Tua. Can we trust him to show up all season? And like I said, he's I do think one, they're they're going season. to be good. But to start them in the top ten without anything to go off of outside of last year being nine and eight, you know, I, I think you got to take a lot of week one power rankings are based off of paper and what's and what and like what is done last season, right? On paper, the Pittsburgh Steelers are. I wanted to really put them above the Cincinnati Bengals. Well, then where are the I, Cleveland I Browns? The Cleveland Browns are number eleven. So <laughs> I actually had the Cleveland Browns at number ten, and then I'm like, man, I've been hyping up this Giants team for the last two weeks. I got to have them up there. So being like the Cleveland Browns, like, like honestly, if I put money. At betstamp.app, use promo code man hour. They and they match my first deposits and they gave me a deposit. I'm like, if like, like, imagine that link is in the is in the description, guys. But I put money on the Cleveland Browns to win the AFC North. They have like a plus 800 shot or plus 900 or, or something. It's something ridiculous, right? The Cleveland Browns, they are a dark horse in the NFL. If Deshaun Watson is 80% of what he was in Houston, the whole NFC North is going to be for a rude awakening. A rude awakening. So where's the Chargers in Jacksonville then? I exactly. Mean, you know... Trash and more trash. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. I mean, my my, my man, Alpha Rob's like in the chat here, says this has to be a buck list. I mean, because it's right. Thank you, Dude, Alpha Rob. This, this is, is the best shit. Uh, uh, tell me, okay, you want to talk about the Pittsburgh Steelers being nine? Oh, I'll, I'll, oh I'll they're leave not the that good, right? There, but you know, the Jacksonville from, from, Jaguars they have to win a Week 18 game last season versus a Tennessee Titans team on a third, third quarterback, their third quarterback, right? And they hadn't won a game in like nine weeks. They and they barely squeaked it out. What did they do in the playoffs against the the, the Chargers, Chargers, who's everybody's high on? The Chargers literally went to bed and they shit in their bed and they're like, "Oh, this looks like cake. Let me put this in my <laughs> mouth." And then they ate it and they still had an opportunity to win the game. And they're like, "Oh, I want to go back for seconds." And that's exactly what they did. They put two piles of shit in their mouth and they still almost beat the terrible Jacksonville Jag with Jaguars. I do not understand why people are so high on the Jacksonville Jaguars. No, you've got, yes. you got to get rid of the Cowgirls. you got to get rid of the Vikings, the Steelers, the Giants. You can replace them with, you know, Detroit Lions, the Saints, Los Angeles Chargers, oh. Jacksonville Jaguars. But those, those bottom three have got to go, and you might as well kick Dak out with it because we all know Trey Lance is going to be in there by week three. And now you are talking shit. The Detroit <laughs> Lions are not – a good team. Okay, how about the Packers then? I'll take the Packers over these clowns. The Vikings won the NFC North last season. You're like, like what have you done for me lately? Packers you like that? You like year. that? Yeah, what's he going to do in primetime? He's going to shit his <laughs> pants just like he will in the playoffs. Well, you like that? For us, they only play three primetime games this season. So, hey, they're going to be at least 14 and three. Yeah, and, and like, <laughs> what was. Uh, uh, Every single one of their wins was less than like a, a touchdown. Yeah, they I mean, had like you, a you can't expect that to differential or something to that effect. Yeah, yeah, and you can't expect that to to work out in their favor again. There's... You are a hundred percent correct. And week two, they could easily drop off. They could easily drop off the list. And you know what? The Detroit Lions might be up there. If the Detroit Lions can even hang with the Kansas City Chiefs without Travis Kelsey, without Chris Jones. They they keep it close, Hoffy. I mean, you've been they talking might, talking yeah. all off season about the pack. You don't have the pack on there. Jordan Love's going to be MVP. Come on, listen. They're at number twelve. If we did a top, you just making list, shit up. No, I'm not. The Packers. I had them outside the top ten because you are correct to an extent, right? What have you done for me lately? To an extent, and lately. The Green Bay Packers completely rebuilt their shed, right? They have a brand new yeah, but it's Lamborghini paper. in the garage, but we don't know if the Lamborghini runs yet. We just put some 
some 93 fuel in it. We we put a little bit of Lucas oil in that Lamborghini, and that baby's starting up. It sounds real, real nice, but I'm not for sure if the garage door open can can like open yet. So once that garage door is open and that Lamborghini is out, the Green Bay Packers will be a top 10 team by week four. The Green Bay Packers will be a top five team by week seven because they'll be 8-0 at that point, 7-0. Packers you uh, you took a page out of your boy Tyreek Hill's book and went to Madden 2024, didn't you? Pull this shit out of your ass. I mean, I did simulate. That's how I did. How I get the first, uh, first, first, uh, round, round, round to right. But Steve is in the chat. What's up, Steve? Pittsburgh has the longest odds to win the division, don't they? I do not know. I have not looked at the ASC North odds besides the uh, uh, uh. Uh, Browns, but I thought the Browns were the longest odds. Ha, like, 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 Hoffy, if, if, I'm, if you can I'm look, look there. that up. I, I think yeah. you should fucking put the Ravens in that shit. <laughs> this list is so messed up. It is not messed up. You, you guys are just jealous because I am a person that will speak the truth. I will speak the truth that Alpha Rob's Buffalo Bills are shit this season. I will speak the truth that the New York Jets are highly overrated. I will speak the truth that Trevor Lawrence is the not the second coming of Jesus Christ himself. You guys just don't understand what real football is, and this is real football right here, baby. Give me these 10 teams in the playoffs. Ooh, it would be great playoffs. Great playoffs. Packers will be at the bottom of their division, says Kevin. Now, nah, that, that, that will be the Bears. <laughs> <laughs> there is no question about that. The Bears will be I mean uh, it, it uh, is Bengals, Ravens, Browns, Steelers for the odds. The Steelers uh, are the, the Browns are at plus four hundred, the Steelers at four seventy, so it's not a big Right. But me but they still got the longest odds, which Steve, wow, I didn't I didn't realize uh, I didn't realize the Steelers would have the longest odds. Doesn't that seem like odd to you? Yeah, I mean wow. The, the Browns every year look good on paper for the past. Since yeah. they got you know OBJ and and Mayfield and and you know that Landry, all the all the team you know, and Joku. I mean they've had some studs for a while. And I was they actually to be the Browns. I was actually reading an article, and the Cleveland Browns have never won the AFC North. The last time they won a division is when it was called the Central. Still, so <laughs> just put that into spur into perspective. But Kevin says uh, Packers will be at, be at the bottom of the division. I want to speak about the Packers here a little bit. So I do think the Bears will be at the bottom of their division. However, Hoffy, I do think the Bears will be much improved, meaning the wins will not come easy for them, but they'll look better on the field. Last year, when you watched the Chicago Bears, you're like, man, my freaking high school team could could like beat this team. Man, my local college team could like beat this team. The Bears just did not look good last season. Justin Fields was a shit show. Their whole offense was like a JV offense type of offense. It was just it was just ridiculous, right? But I think you guys are sleeping on the Packers. I think the Packers will win this win win this win this division. The Packers are that team. Yeah, the Bears have some cup, you know, some cupcake games in there as far as the Falcons, the Cardinals, mm, you know, mm-hmm. even, we'll, we'll even say the Browns, uh, the Panthers. Uh, that, that'll be that'll be a game, I think. Uh, I mean, but they also play the Saints. They play the Chargers. Uh, I mean, they do have the Commanders. They got the Bucks. I mean, those are two very winnable games, but they also play the Bills. They play the Chiefs, um, you know. Like I said already, the Chargers, they, you know, the Lions twice, the Packers twice. I mean, it's going to be tough to, I I don't see how they can, they're not at the bottom of the barrel there in that, in that division. Yeah. So let me pull up these power rankings back up. And Alpha Rob says two, seven, eight, nine, and 10 all got to go. So seven, eight, nine, 10, I've all got to go. He, so he says Seattle's got to go. Vikings got to go. Steelers got to go. Giants got to go. And then number two, the Miami Dolphins have got to go as well. Alpha Rob, what about number five? What? What? Basically, Alpha Rob wants Buffalo Bills at number one, then the Kansas City Chiefs, then Buffalo Bills at number three, four, and five, 
rounded out by some other shit show teams. Like, <laughs> like, let's go ahead and put the Houston Texans up there for a crying out loud. Like, what? Half of Alpha the- Rob, send us your send us your top ten. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I'm I, sure they're going to be better than Bucks. I, I, I don't <laughs> doubt that. So he says Packers eight and zero. Yeah. Have you seen the Packers' first eight games? They are have a very, very favorable first eight games of the season. Start now yeah, they, with, they, with the Chicago Bears. That's an easy dub. <laughs> the Falcons, there's two and zero. Oh. The yeah. Saints. That that's, could be a game. That could be a game, but I think that is it. Uh, it's in Green Bay. Yeah, it yeah, is no, in Green that's, Bay. That's Packers, and it's the opening home game of the season. That place yeah. is going to be lit. And then the Lions calm, calm to town. Uh, and, Monday, and you got payback four. on your mind on that one, I think. Oh yeah. Too. So easily four and zero. Raiders five and zero. Broncos six and zero. Yeah. Uh, Buck, you might not actually be speaking shit out of your mouth for once. I mean, the only two games that I would Vikings and the Rams be worried about. <laughs> Is and the Steelers too, so they could they could go nine and zero to start. Shit, Steelers are pretty good, but it is oh, so geez. it is it is at the Steelers, so you know that kind of levels it out. But in those first, but eight Watt games, won't be there by then. He's gonna be he's gonna yeah. be torn pectoral or something by then. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so the only two games that I really have circled that I'll be like, eh, maybe they could possibly lose that game is the Broncos at Mile High Stadium. Because Mile High Stadium is a very tough place to play. You go a mile and a half above sea level, air is thin. It is just a tough place to play. For whatever reason, every team not named the Kansas City Chiefs have a tough time playing there, and I don't know why. Uh, But other than that, eight Have you ever played at altitude? At altitude? No, I have not. No? Okay. The closest I have been at quote altitude was Boulder was Boulder, Colorado, and that was I don't know, like maybe a thousand or two thousand feet, maybe. I'm okay, sure. but so then this question is somewhat valid. D- did it affect you at all? Uh, yes. It so it uh, people that have asthma like understand okay, this. Yeah. So it's just like like you can never like feel like you're always trying to catch your breath, right? Like when you take a deep breath, like it just isn't there, right? I mean, it's there, but it's but like I mean, it, it is. Maybe I'm just a different breed. Well, well, have you played at altitude? I have, yeah. Plus, I'm in Denver all the time for for work and you know doing all kinds of you well know, run, when you run in and everything. So you play baseball work. at altitude, right? I'm assuming. And soccer. Okay, well, soccer is definitely a lot more demanding than baseball is, but I feel baseball is not that demanding of a sport as far as like huffing and puffing for like long periods of time, right? No, I I, mean, like, I agree. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm like, more so referring to I you know going for my morning jog before before going to work when I was you know when I'm right. in Denver and as well as I played soccer, um, you know shit, I've even been to Mexico for soccer. So yeah, I feel like if you smoke, you uh, probably have a better. Uh, lung capacity for the altitude because you can't breathe it breathe as deep like anyways <laughs> i don't I smoke don't anymore i'm just, i didn't smoke when i was an athlete either so that, that's invalid i'm just talking shit so your truth is only the truth in another dimension kevin you are absolutely right i have been living in the fourth dimension my <laughs> entire life where the time is not time time is measured by units or something i i, I i'm not for sure how the fourth dimension is like measured. But Kevin says bears beat the Packers week one, lock it in. Can I borrow some money to bet on that? Cause I ain't trusting my wallet. Listen, Hoffy, if you go to bet stamp app at right now, use promo code man hour for every new sports book that you sign up for, they will give you that money. So if you have bar school, you to say that <laughs> uh, they don't pay us anything. Well, they, that they pay us something, right? To pay, but but seriously, uh, when we signed up for it back in June or July, they gave me two hundred eighty dollars to bet with off a of barstool, FanDuel, and um, what's the other one? The the other major major, major one here, uh, FanDuel. Are you still uh, in the positive? Because I know Combs games. was probably in the negative on the first night. Uh, uh, I am positive three thousand dollars as of right now from March Madness. Still, so 
with that being said, Alpha Rob says, why Finn's at number two, Buck? Because when we look at the Miami Dolphins, Hoffy, you are a AFC East guy. Do you think the Miami Dolphins on paper right now had the best defense in the AFC East? Yes. You know, and, that, and that's even with Jalen Ramsey being on the sideline right now. But with yeah, they, Eli they got... Apple already being burnt and it's not even week week one yet. So yes. So uh, Alpha Rob, that is the big reason why I have them in the top five there is because of their defense. We know that their offense is going to do some work. We know that Jalen Waddle, Tyreek Hill, Scotty Miller, uh, they're all going to do work. They they do have an older running back committee, right? They have uh, Wilson, Mostert uh, off the top of my head there. Um, who else they got in the backfield? I think they got uh, a acne guy, which is a which is a rookie, I do believe. Uh, so their offense will be very, very hard to stop. And when you have a very hard offense to stop, that makes your defense able to play looser, able to play funner, take more risk because you know your offense can bail you out. That is why the Kansas City Chiefs defense usually usually excels the second half of the season because they know Patrick Mahomes is going to be balling. They know that, you know, they can take those risks. So that is why I have them at number two, because if the season were to be played right now, I think the Miami Dolphins can beat almost every team on this list nine times out of ten. I say almost, but, you know. Uh, Hoffy, would you have the Dolphins at two, or like where would you have the Dolphins at? <sighs> I think you got to have them in the top five, but I could I could see you sliding Bengals, Chiefs, San Fran in front of them. Yeah, very. Um, yeah, I I do agree with that. Yes, but but other than that, I I think they're right there. Um, I mean, I I we talk about defenses in the AFC East. I think I don't think the Jets are. I mean, uh, the Bills are going to be as great as they have been. I think a lot of their players are you know past their prime. Von Miller, you know, Poyer, and he's um, still hurt. He's out yeah. for four weeks. I mean, like at least. the Patriots, there too many question marks there on the offense, but they're going to have a good defense. Um, you know, I think that their rookie quarterback, Christian Gonzalez, is going to be pretty solid, but even the Jets are going to have a pretty good defense. So I still think that I'm going to give the edge to the Dolphins, but I, I think the Jets are right there. And heck, I could even, you could probably even argue the Patriots defense, but, you know, I don't think they have enough on, on offense to warrant them uh, being relevant at this time. Right, and just to add to your point here, I kind of feel like two through six, we we can kind of put the names in a hat and draw them out, and I would not be disappointed in any of that order because, like, I kind of feel like those those teams all match up to match up together really, really, really well. So that's why I currently have the Miami Dolphins at number two. Is just because I think their defense is just as good as their offense, and obviously their offense is very, very good. So Kevin says the Bears, where oh, there it is, Bears game scores will be closer. Uh, I do agree. The Bears games will be closer this season, but a wise man once told me you have to learn how to lose before you know how to win. And right now, the Buff or the Chicago Bears just don't know how to do anything right now. They're still. They're they're still believing Justin Fields is going to be an MVP this season, Hoffy. Like, so obviously the Bears don't know shit. Who's they? Uh, are we putting Combs in the they category? I don't think anyone's calling we him can, to be MVP. We can put fans they... on there. Yeah, Combs thinks that uh, Jesus. Justin Fields will be an MVP. <laughs> I think he'll. I think he's gonna. I mean, shit. It's, it's hard not to take a step forward with what he put on. You know what he's put on the field. I think. I do think Pace has done some good work as far as GM. Uh, I mean, they got to be able to protect him, but I, I don't see them being relevant yet. Um, but they will be the, relevant in a fact that the games will be closer and be more competitive and be more fun to watch, but that will not correlate into wins on the scorebook. I agree. So Steve says Green Bay, good quarterback reviews for 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 some. Uh, yes, Jordan Love. Uh, like, I feel like Hoffie. People either love Jordan Love or they hate Jordan Love. There is no mediocre point. Like, yeah, he could be a decent quarterback for five, six, seven, eight years. Either it is either 
they're all in. They're hyping him up. They're saying all oh, this, 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 this guy is a bust. Where do you stand on Jordan Love? Are you on the hype train of Jordan Love? You know, best quarterback in the NFC North, like I've been saying, or is he going to be on the bust? I'm a big fan of, of Jordan Love. I mean, look what Aaron Rodgers did versus this, you know, this stout defense of the Eagles in that was it a Sunday night or Monday night game? Yep. He he goes out injured. In comes Jordan Love, gets them back in the game. I think when you have um, you know, Dylan and then you have uh their their number one running back, and then you have Dobbs, you have um Watson, you know, I, I think they have the weapons around them. They're all young, you know. You know, we've seen with Matthew Stafford, he doesn't know how to, you know, gel with these younger people, you know, and such like that. Jordan Love is young. The receivers are young. The running backs are young. I think they have a great core for him to be successful. Um, And I almost wonder if that's kind of why Aaron Rodgers struggled last year, because he didn't really kind of gel with him towards the, you know, till the end of the year. Right. Jordan Love seemed to come in on the, you know, limited access that he had, did fine. You know, he's had all off season. So, yeah, I think we're absolutely going to see. Um, you know, a gem out of out of Jordan Love at that quarterback position. Yeah, and we've been talking uh, talking up the receiver cores of Miami and Cleveland and Dallas and other teams out there. I, I've been me myself included. I've I, I've been forgetting how good of a receiver core that the Green Bay Packers could possibly have this season. They are all very very young. They're all very very skilled. And so I think the sky is the limit. They have a very I mean, unfortunately, they could be really, really, really bad or really, really, really good. I don't think there's going to be any mediocre, mediocre point for the Green Bay Packers this season. So, uh, yeah, I, I am on the Jordan Love hype, hype, hype train. Steve, thanks for bringing that up. Kevin says Houston Texans would fit perfect on the power rankings list. <laughs> hey, listen, Kevin. You you've been running your mouth a lot tonight. All right. Listen, the Houston Texans are not that bad a team. The Houston Texans will be okay. So if they're a top 10 team come week two, that's only because they're in the AFC South. Kevin, Kevin, next week I'm I, I'm gonna troll you just to put the Houston Texans up there at number 10. Even even if they get blown out by whoever the freak they play, I don't know, like I can't even look the seeing who they play, it doesn't matter. I'm putting Texans at, at number 10, Hoffy. <laughs> and Alpha <laughs> Rob comes with his top 10 list. He says Buffalo, number one, Kansas City, two, Cincinnati, and then Philadelphia Eagles at number four, San Francisco, five, Baltimore Ravens at number six. Oh, my good Lord. Dallas Cowboys, Chargers, Jacksonville, and then Detroit. First off, what is this hype about the Baltimore Ravens? Hoffy, what have the Ravens done this offseason to really like, oh, man, let's get a hard on for the Baltimore Ravens. Lamar Jackson, oh, praise Allah. Like, they signed Ob- you know, OBJ, and he's feeling oh. great after three torn ACLs and 30-plus 30, 30 years of age. So, oh, no, Beckham Jr. was <laughs> fine about 15 years ago when he made the one catch. <laughs> Ever since then, he's been a below average receiver. Oh, are you guys that excited about Zay Flowers, a rookie that you don't even know what he's going to do in his first NFL game? Hey, don't be talking shit about my Boston College, buddy. Yeah, BC's trash. So is <laughs> anything, it Kansas State, but anything that has initials BC is trash. Let's just be honest about it. <laughs> <laughs> but this is the one that is kind of. I mean, I understand the hype around Baltimore, right? Lamar Jackson can lead them to the promised land. Sure, whatever. Dallas Cowboys, yes. The only He's thing a- that I am really concerned about is one is like is the Chargers. Him the and Char- two are going to be in a retirement home together, but by the time they're thirty-five years old, I just, I just, I, I cannot jump on the Chargers wagon. Yes, if you look at the paper, Hoffy, the Chargers have a great team, a great defense. They have. Kalia Mack, Joey B- B- Bosa, uh, JC, what's his name, right? They got Jackson. They got Samuel yeah. Jr. Yeah, I, I agree. But And I want to jump on the train, too. I love their quarterback. I'm an Oregon fan. I want to see him do well. But when you have, you know, that coach, I don't, I'm don't. i not even going to say his name. He's that fucking bad. And then you add Brandon Kellen Stanley. Moore. Ugh, <laughs> I'll put some on his name. But, <laughs> and then you got to throw in Kellen Moore. I mean, 
good lord talk about the you know dumb leading the dumber yeah i just i mean let's let me take a look at the Chargers schedule this season because i believe they had one of the hardest schedules in the nfl i i i believe was a top 10 uh strength of schedule there because if you look at their first 6 weeks of the season they're at home versus my my miami they're playing a, t- a titans team at Titans, at Vikings, and they play Raiders, Cowboys, and then at Chiefs. If they can start three and three, their first six games of the season, I could possibly start to buy into some hype of the Chargers. Because let's just be honest, that is a pretty tough stretch. You like you have two division games, and then you play a top five team in the Dallas Cow- Cowboys, and then the Vikings, and then the Dolphins as well. All top ten, all top ten teams, and a Titans team. That is probably going to be much improved because Ryan Tannehill is the man over there. Not Will Levis, not whatever else his guy's name is. Uh, uh, what is his other guy's name? Yeah, the Chargers are uh, fourth in, in hardest schedule. Yeah, so fourth hardest and, schedule. And, and Miami's number three. You know, yeah. Chiefs are just behind the Chargers. Um, New England's number one, Raiders two, but yeah, you got Dolphins three, Chargers four, Chiefs five. The Bills are are there at number seven. You know, the Jets are there at number eight. Yeah, it just it, it is. I mean, I guess maybe Hoffy, you can say I'm biased because, like, obviously, I like I I am a Chiefs Chiefs fan, and the I believe the Chargers are the only team on on paper that can really rival the Chiefs. I guess, but I just I cannot jump on this chargers train like and i know many people are for whatever reason and i and i just don't know why but it is what it is kevin says acne is the rookie yes Uh, uh, i don't know anything about i got god i don't even know if i'm saying his name right a cane acne like i'm not for sure but either way i need to watch film on this guy because my man arthur uh Arthur Brown, ha 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 he has been talking him up a lot. And I don't know anything about him at all. The only thing I know is he went to Texas A&M and he was drafted in the third round. That's the only thing that I know about him. Uh, I didn't see him play against LSU or Alabama or any other SEC team because I don't, I think SEC football is way overrated, but I digress from that. But do you know anything about this guy? I don't, but I, I mean, you look at Mike McDaniel's resume over in San Francisco and they, ha- I believe they had most are over there. I mean, they had a lot of guys that had been in the league and not done a lot and he was able to get them in the right position and, yeah. and have them, you know, make it some plays. So I think with, uh, if he gets the right skill set and, you know, him drafting him, I'm assuming, you know, he, he likes the skill set that he brings to the table. So I do think that, um, Mike McDaniel will put them in a, uh, him, in his you know spot to be successful so yeah i do think that you know he's a good coach and you're not a bad running back so i haven't seen a lot of him but i just trust that you know mcdaniel will yeah. be able to produce with his running back he might be one of the only young coaches that i like right now i think kevin and said then, Tua. go ahead especially when you're gonna have you know you have waddle and then you have hill so you're going to the box isn't going to be as full because you're going to have to have double coverage, if not on both of them, on at least one of them. So that's going to open up that box for the running backs to, you know, to come out of the backfield on those screen passes or, or even, you know, run up the middle and, and get a couple extra yards before contact. So, you know, that's that's just my two cents. Right. And and I also, guys, I just realized that I misspoke. Braxton Berrios is the number three receiver for the Miami Dolphins. Scotty Miller is on the Atlanta Falcons. That was my mistake. I just wanted to clear clear that up. Uh, so I don't get trolled in the chat later. Uh, Kevin says Tua will not make it through a whole season. Now, last season, I th- obviously Tua had those back-to-back concussions, and we saw the uh, on the field, right? <laughs> but, uh, but hey, he's looking a little bit more like a Samoan now. So yeah, didn't um um Stephen A. Smith call him fat? <laughs> no, Ryan Clark. Oh, Ryan Clark called him fat. Yeah, so I mean, he's thicker. <laughs> He can take those shots, shots, shots now. But, Keep my name uh, out your mouth. Yeah, but even even if Tua cannot complete the full season, they brought in a very valuable backup from the New York Jets by the name of Mike Longneck White, 
and he will be a very serviceable backup. If this guy was a dinosaur, he would he would be a plant eater getting those leaves off the very top of the tree. And we forget that they drafted a quarterback last season, entering his second season. Yes, he was a seventh-round pick. Yes, I get it. But he was from the Kansas State University. And this man, Trash. Thompson, if you give him the opportunity, he is going to do some work. Hoffy, you can say trash. But my man, Skylar Thompson, last season took the Buffalo Bills on the brink of almost beating them in the wild card game. 34 to 31. Skylar Thompson led them to almost to the promised land, and Tyree Kill only had 69 yards in that game. Only 69 only? yards in that game. I, I could lead the freaking Dolphins past the Bills. I mean, shit, we could put you at quarterback and we'd be the Dolphins would be all right. Listen, I had... Arthur Brown could probably put up 350. <laughs> I mean, our uh, Alpha Rob, I don't want to dog your Buffalo Bills by any means, but Skylar Thompson, a third round quarter or sorry, a third string quarterback, seventh round pick in his second career game, my, my sorry, his third career game ever, took the Buffalo Bills to 31, 34 to 31 in the wild card game when the leading but when the best receiver in the NFL only has 69 yards. Understand that Skylar Thompson is that guy. Jim Melvin is in chat. There's a new name we have never seen. Hoffy. Jim, welcome to the show, man. We are live Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. East Coast time. We do after our show every Tuesday and Friday at 10 p.m. East Coast time. He says the Dolphins have to prove it over a long stretch of games before I believe it. You are correct. Last season, the Miami Dolphins season was very much of a roller coaster. What they won three games, they lost three games. Won what four games, lost four games. Won two games, lost two games. Yes, it was a very much of a roller coaster, coaster, coaster ride last season for the Miami Dolphins. Uh, Jim, I do have to concur with you on that. But right now, if the season were to end, obviously we haven't even played week one yet, but if the season were to end, I think the Miami Dolphins could could beat 30 of the 32 NFL teams. Or sorry, 31 of the 32 NFL teams. Well, no, it'd be 30, 30 of the 31 NFL teams. You can't count. You can't beat yourself unless you are the Arizona Cardinals. Alpha Rob says they can't beat most of the teams on that list, as in the Buffalo Bills I re- think he's referring to. Buffalo, I, I, yeah, but they're gonna have to. Josh Allen's gonna have to have a, a, a you know a a one twenty five plus QBR rating kind of game and just you know put the team on yeah. his on his back, similar to you know. But heck, I mean, look what he did against your Chiefs and you know, give Patrick Mahomes twenty three seconds and he comes it back was and wins. Thirteen it, so. seconds, right, Alpha Rob? Yeah, 13, thirteen seconds, yeah. baby. That's all we need. <laughs> no, but uh, <laughs> Alpha Rob was so mad after that game, and we were trolling him in like on the show all game long. But this is the problem. This is the biggest problem with the Buffalo Bills, right? Now, they are a very good passing team. They do have Gabe Davis, a great number two receiver. St- Staff on days, a really good number one receiver. They do have Docks and Knox, a really good tight end. However, beyond that, who do you have? If you shut down Stefan Diggs, is Gabe Davis going to step up and be that guy? I don't think he is. And then you don't have a running game. James Cook, Damian Harrison, Latavius Murray, are you uh, run the ball? Sorry, I had a cough and a little, little bit dying there. But that that is the Buffalo Bills' biggest flaw is they don't – they are not a balanced team. When you take away their passing game, they're like saying, I'm still going to pound the wall. Uh, uh, what is that movie? F- uh, I think it's the re- Remember the Titans, right? It's just like butter. Give it time. It always works or something. Like just, just, just like that. I mean, the Buffalo Bills, they're just going to pass and pass and pass and pass and pass and pass. It's great until November, and then when you get six feet of snow on the ground, you're still trying to pass the ball 40 times in a game. Come on. Hoffy, weren't you uh, a part of that game, Mr. Uh, Three passes from Mac Jones and your New England Patriots in that game? 
I was, yeah. But I mean, I I wonder if you know they've learned their lesson for the past you know three plus years now, and if they went out and got um, you know the running back Harris, who was with my you know Patriots, and maybe they're going to rely a little bit more in those November, December, January five feet of snow games that they play in Buffalo, and you know pound the rock. So Kevin says, yeah, I'm pretty good at running my mouth, LMAO. Well. Come on the show, Kevin, and run your mouth. Apparently, Kevin has a uh, show that he does. They they did record their their podcast uh, Sunday. I, I I do believe so. Kevin, come on and talk your shit, man. Brandon Dickerson, that is a new name we have not seen here before. Hoffy, and he said Chiefs at four. LOL. So, Brandon, I understand you are new here. And we just don't laugh at statements just, just, just like this. Where would you have the Chiefs? I mean, obviously, I want to put them at number one as a Chiefs fan, as reigning Super Bowl champions. I feel that they, they probably should be at number one, right? But I think there are three other teams right now that are better than they are without Chris Jones. I mean, you've are are you sold on their you know just through training camp their receivers? You, know, um, you lost Juju Smith Schuster. Which know, which we which, have which talked a lot about loss. Go What's ahead. What's that? Which, which, which was a which was a underlying or like a under kind of a undertow of a big loss, right? But I think the addition of Sky uh, Sky more from year one to year two will replace the subtraction of Juju Smith and Schuster alone. MVS, a second year in the system. Tooney, a full year in the system. And then you have some guys that are kind of up and coming, right? Ricky James. This this guy, um, he, he was drafted back in, what, 2017, I think, by the San Francisco 49ers. And he just hasn't had an opportunity to really show his worth and I think he is going to show some work. And then we got Rashid Rice. Rashid Rice, uh, he, he he was our second round uh, pick this season. I think he is going to explode off the map. I got the opportunity to watch a little bit of his SMU highlight tape. And there are certain guys that just like jump off that screen at you. And I think Rashid Rice is that guy. Now, will they be as talented as the Kansas City Chiefs receivers two years ago with like uh, uh, Hardman and Tyreek Hill and uh, uh, who, who, like who, who else? Uh, Josh Gordon, like those guys. No, but they could. The good thing that the Kansas City Chiefs do have is they don't have that number one receiver. That is what makes the Chiefs so dangerous in the receiving game. Is you, is you don't know who to double. And I've seen people, oh, double tie Travis Kelsey. He is a guy. If you are double teaming a tight end, you have already lost that game. Hoffy, you know that. When people tried to double team Gronk or uh, uh, who's a guy that killed his mom, uh, <laughs> <Bernandez>, <laughs> right? Uh, uh, when you start double teaming those, 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 those guys, the rest of the offense is open up, right? Uh, like Are you referring to Aaron Hernandez? Yes, he didn't kill his mom, but he killed like his brother and <laughs> his brother-in-law. Know. Yeah, whatever. But you know, my son's named after Aaron Hernandez. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but and you guys aren't even Mexican. But but yeah, right. he he's named Aaron because Aaron Hernandez was my favorite player. But this was pre <laughs> pre. Pre murders that we knew of. Was it though? Was it though? Was it really pre murders? That's, that's why I said that we knew of. Right, but but the Chiefs at four. The I had the Chiefs at four just because. Honestly, I try to take my bias out of them, and sometimes I think I grade them too hard to show that I'm not being biased. If that makes sense, doesn't make make sense, Hoffy. Like you're being harder on your team because you don't want them to people to think that you're being biased, right? Oh yeah, I, yeah, I don't know. absolutely. I mean, even yeah. when the Patriots were on their dynasty, a lot of times, you know, you could say, ah, you know, no, we're, we're not that good, but you know, deep down, you knew that they were that good. So right. yeah, I can, I can understand that. You know, yeah. and you know, it's 
they said that, you know, some swelling in the knee, but, you know, the ACL is still intact. But, I mean, if he does, I, I don't think you want to play him week one because if he is questionable week one and takes a hit, I mean, he's – pretty vital to your team so i think you'd almost be best off resting him regardless and just you know unless it's absolutely 100 percent, which right. maybe it is but i mean it, it is it is the line we have blake we have blake bell people don't know who blake bell is because he is an unsung hero for the kansas city chiefs he he is almost travis kelsey's twin like big and bulky and fast and un unnaturally quick i don't know it just like it just kind of it, it, it just kind of weird kevin says monkeys realistic top 10 number one the chiefs number two eagles 49ers Bengals, bills cowboys jets dolphins lions seahawks so alpha rob has given us his top 10 kevin's given us his top 10 as well and two common themes that i'm seeing here is the lions and jets both in the top 10 Hoffy, you mentioned the Jets and the Lions as well in the top 10. <sighs> well, 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 I'm not putting the Lions in the top 10 of I mine, but I am putting them in the top, you know, over Seattle Seahawks, over Minnesota Vikings. Um, but I, you know, and the Seahawks last year were sneaky good. I expect them to be right. decent again, but I mean, I think a lot of that played into, you know, the schedule played into it. I mean, I, I it's just not the same Seattle team that they they've had in the past. I mean, you're, so you're, you're right. They're even better now because Jesus, Geno Smith on the MVP level. Confidence is killer in the NFL. <laughs> they added. Oh, uh, I'll take Justin the, Fields over him all day for MVP. They they drafted the receiver from Ohio State, uh, Smith, uh, the, Big, Jigba. Uh, the the Jigba. He is yeah. going to be great. They uh, 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 Jamal Adams is back. That defense is going to be scary. D do not sleep on the Seattle Seahawks, guys. I mean, and I they do play the, the Cardinals the twice the and the Rams twice. So and they play the four wins five. right there. There's six yeah, and zero oh right there. No, Jesus. <laughs> oh, Lord. You're 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 right. Let's be realistic. Five, but yeah, they should go four and one. you know four and two, five and one. You know, if they sneak one out against the Niners, so Kevin says A K N A is 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 uh, how you say say his name. A K N A is fast little shit. He is five foot five, so I do like some fast little shits. I love a good power shit. And he says back <laughs> to back to back. I'm confused by that statement, Hoffy. You know what he's talking about. Back to Jeez. back to back. I don't know. Is he talking Alpharoff about says Tua gaining weight going to be slower than he was before. Well, you see, Alpha Rob, that is what's great about being a quarterback is you snap the ball in a shotgun, you're five yards back. You take two steps and you throw the ball. Quarterbacks don't have to be fast. Right, Tom Brady? Right, Peyton Manning? Right, Patrick Mahomes. You don't got to be fast. You just got to be able to throw the rock around and hand the ball off. Jeez. Yeah, know the right times to take off when you you know when when the middles open up, and that's what Mahomes does perfectly. So yeah, I mean, if Tua takes a page out of Mahomes' book, I'll take that all day. Kevin says the Buffalo Bills defense was completely wiped out. LOL. We had so many injuries. It all explains it now. Kevin is a Buffalo Bills Bills fan. The seas have parted and everything's come to <laughs> fruition now. Blame it on injuries. Next man up, my man. I don't care. Next man up. It says y'all are ridiculous. The Bills had the number one defense last season. Are we living in like 2004? What the fuck? <laughs> Did we not see the Philadelphia Eagles defense? Did we not see the Kansas City Chiefs defense last season? Uh, right, and the, and the Eagles Niners. got younger on defense. Right, younger. Yes, the Bills with have some three, superstars yeah. on defense, but we're talking. They're out. They're they're past their prime. Their window is quickly evaporating. You know, and and I would have. You know, it, it's tough to say when they're in my division, but I would have liked to see them over the Chiefs or even over the Bengals. 
I mean, people are going to shoot me for that, but it is what it is. But I, I think their window at this point is closed. I don't think Josh Allen can have three or four games where he is, you know, just magnificent. And I think that is what it's going to take to to come out of that AFC. You know, I, I, Mahomes can do that for you. Burrow can do that. Allen can do that two two games. I don't think he can do it three, Allen four games in a row. Allen can do that from 20 to 20. Once he's inside the 20, a.k.a. the red zone, he likes to throw the ball to the other team. Over and over and over <laughs> and over again. So I rec- I just Googled the Buffalo Bills defense ranked in 2022, and it says in context, the Buffalo Bills ranked ninth in the metric of the 2022 and the second in 2021 on the defense. However, the quality of the Bills defense, depending on how much the linebacker Von Miller plays this season, unfortunately, Von Miller will miss at least four games this season due to being on the pup list. So, Last season, the Buffalo Bills defense was ranked ninth, and the previous season, they were ranked second. So there is some valid- some valid- validity of what Kevin's saying, but number one defense, uh, I can name you at least seven better than the Buffalo Bills right off the top, top of my head. Alpha Rob says, especially against Fraser's defense is when the Kansas City Chiefs excel. Listen, uh, I read an article about this, Hoffie about the 13 seconds when the Buffalo Bills gave up that final play to the Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, Sean McDermott was coming, was, was calling plays that last 13 seconds. So Leslie Fraser wasn't the issue. It was Sean McDermott. Sean McDermott, I think, is one of the most overrated coaches in the NFL. I think he's on a hot seat this season. I think it's time for him to win or shut up and move on couple more comments here guys before we end the show here jim says 20 2023 jets might replicate the 2020 bucks uh, i think it's gonna go one way or the other yeah i don't think there's gonna be an in-between and i, I think we've discussed you know or at least you have discussed that in the morning shows but you know when you have that many that much talent on on one side of the ball how are you going to spread the you know this is, goes back to this morning show. How are you going to yeah. spread the love? You know, winning cures everything, but yeah, you know, time time will tell. Especially at that running back spot, right? They have Brees Hall, they have Delvin Cook and Michael Carter. Now they are said to be on a pitch count for Delvin Cook and Brees and uh, uh Brees Hall. So Michael Carter should get the bulk of the carries come week week one versus the Buffalo Bills, but. If they lose, fingers start pointing, yada, yada, yada. Kevin says Gabe Davis set up in the last 13 seconds of the of that game. Gabe, Gabe Davis did have a great game versus the Kansas City Chiefs. However, they still lost the game. Uh, <laughs> Robbie says, what's up? And I say, what's up, Robbie? Is that a P on your hat, Robbie? Oh, oh yeah, good old, for, good old Pirates hat. Pirates hat. And, oh, Lord. Let me bust out the real hat. Where's where's my rose hat? There it is, right there. Casey all day. <laughs> all we can see uh, is your jacked forearms from jacking off. That that that's my man Luke G. That's that's not even me. That's a black guy. And I'm clearly white. Jeez, this guy. He says, just wondering, but what are these rankings based off of? So these rankings are based off of what Madden I saw twenty four preseason. OTAs and what I see on paper and how I think the teams will, you know, do week one, how they will end the season. And I think if the season were to start it in today, this is how the season would end. I think the Giants would be at number 10, Steelers 9, Vikings, Seahawks, Bengals, Cowboys, Chiefs, 49ers, Dolphins, and then the Eagles. I, I, Ro- I think Robbie's it- mad you don't have the Steelers at number five. I guess he is a Pittsburgh fan, so probably. (laughs) And who are the KC receivers, Buck? We have Ricky James. We have Sky Moore. uh, You have MVS. You have Tooney. um, You can put Isaiah Pacheco out there, Travis Kelsey, uh, Jarrett McKinnon. I mean, you can pretty much anybody that plays running back or receiver can be a receiver for the Kansas City Chiefs, and that's what makes them so great. Jim Powell says, my plane just landed, but you are all wrong. All y'alls. <laughs> whoa, 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 Jim. I'm not taking Thanks. any credit for this shit. <laughs> well, first of all, Jim is a Raiders fan, so he's pissed that the Raiders are not number one. 
because by golly, <laughs> oh, Raiders are going to the promised land. Well, we got Jimmy you Jimmy. got the 49ers up there in the top five. That's going to piss them <laughs> off, too. Uh, uh, ha- Hoffy, let's Why talk a little bit about us the together. What the fuck? Let's talk a little bit about the Raiders. Do you think the Raiders can legitimately have a winning season? They have Jimmy G. They have Devontae Adams. They have Josh Jacobs back. They have um, uh, what's that Who's defensive the, end um, name? Mason what, Crosby. What's their coach's name? Oh, that's right. Josh <laughs> McDaniels. Yeah, they ain't winning shit. <laughs> The only they'll, they'll, they'll win two games. Good. He'll run up and down the sidelines, waving to his fans, and he'll be out of there by the end of the year. <laughs> true, true. Just true. ask the Broncos. But they all tall. But they tall. What? I don't. Alpha Rob, we've been talking about drinking, and you should probably. <laughs> <laughs> but they tall. I mean. Every, what are we referring to, Alpha Rob? Because to Combs, everybody's tall. My man's fucking five six, two hundred and sixty pounds. Everybody's <laughs> tall to Combs. So <laughs> he'd make a great fullback. He would if if he could take more than three inches, of, like a like a uh, like a step. But Jim Powell says, "Pretty Jimmy, baby, slinging those hoes, slinging slinging throws and banging hoes." <laughs> I like it. Who was the porn and, star he was dating? I don't know. Uh, Jimmy G is probably the most attractive NFL player. I'm just going to put that out there. Robbie says the Bills couldn't really run the ball effectively. I think that is their main problem. Exactly right. Exactly what we said, Robbie, about what Hoffy about 20 minutes ago. That that is the Buffalo Bills' biggest downfall is they do not run the ball. They want to pass the ball 90 percent of the time. Yeah, but they went out and got Damian Harris. That's all going to change. I'm telling you. They're gonna change their ways. Robbie, clearly not a Steelers fan. He's like, I don't I honestly don't care what the Steelers are ranked. It doesn't matter where you rank us, because we're gonna be number one at the end of the season, baby. <laughs> Kevin says running backs and tight ends are not wide receivers. LOL. Well, you see, Kevin, if you were he's a never Kevin, met Aaron Hernandez. You have never met Aaron Her- Hernandez. He caught it and he received it all at the same time. And he but ran it. And he, he did all three. It. Oof. I think we're talking about three different things here, but he definitely caught it and ran it a lot. If you catch the drifter, Hoffy. <laughs> he, he was a catcher <laughs> and a receiver. Uh, that's why he oh, – sorry. Let's not I get believe it. McKin- <laughs> yeah, no, no, you're done. I believe McKinnon has lined up in the slot and, you know, on the outside. Yes. I mean, uh, it, 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 same with Kelsey. Legitimately, everybody on the Chiefs roster – uh, that is listed as a tight end receiver or a running back can line up as a receiver. The only person that I would not put as a slot receiver for the Kansas City Chiefs is the backup tight end, not Blake Bell. Uh, the guy's slipping my mind right now. Uh, what is his name? Oh, uh, Noah Gray, right? I would not line up Noah Gray as a slot receiver. This guy's like 6'3", 300 pounds. He's simply there to block for you on blocking on goal line things. Kevin says, shit, I'm surprised the Raiders aren't on this list. <laughs> Man. <laughs> Jesus. All right. Next week, next week, we're going to have the Texans. We're going to have the chart. Uh, it's, it's so, so, Hoffy, it was about this time last Our season. Top when 10, like, top 10. <laughs> it was a I want to say it was about week nine last season when people were dogging my power because they were pissed off because I had the San Francisco 49ers like at number seven or eight or something, just 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 like that. So I made a brand new power rankings list. I put every 32 NFL team and put number one next to other name. So people could not get pissed off. And people were still pissed off about well, you can't put every team at number one. Clearly, I was trolling. <laughs> Clearly, I was trolling, but people don't don't understand understand it. He says pirates rock, but pin is where it's at. The pins, the pin. When the fuck the is penguin. the last time the penguins were relevant? I don't know. Who fucking cares about hockey? Wisconsin sucks. Full of trees and thick, polished bitches. <laughs> Tori Anderson would take a you know offense to that one. <laughs> 
And last comment of the night, I flew inside. I flew in beside a Packer fan who who thinks love is a second coming, and he is exactly right. Packers fan is not wrong. I'd say I he's never... the third coming, right behind Favre and Rodgers. Uh, yeah. Well, I guess you could say fourth because wasn't uh, who was the quarterback before that was a wasn't Bart Starr was it? Was it oh, no, yeah, Bart Starr? Yeah. It? yeah. Packers. I can't remember. I'm not that old. Speaking of old, my wife turned 42. <laughs> She's older. Cradle than robber. Right. What are you, I like got 30, the... 31. Yeah, I wish. <laughs> 10 years ago. Uh, but, guys, that is going to be it for the show tonight. These are the week one NFL power rankings. Uh, join us tomorrow, 10 a.m. East Coast time as we dive some more deep into some Chiefs Lions talk. Man. Hoffy, we're like 36 hours away from NFL football. Are you excited? I get a half chub just thinking about it. Ooh, let me get a full chub. <laughs> no, you only get the waist Hoffy. up tonight, bud. What's that? You only get the waist up tonight. I'm not wearing pants. Oh, sweet. Sweet. Closing thoughts, Hoffy. No, I, I think you hit the nail on the head. Just looking forward to uh, getting these next 36 hours over so we can get uh, on with the uh, this upcoming season. From what I understand, the best way to pass time is beat it till it bleeds and beat it because it's bleeding. See you next time, guys. <laughs>